right, so a, uh, a guy named Dale Carnegie wrote in a book that he wrote called uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. He said, one of the greatest things that you can do in order to influence people is smile. See, some of you just smiled when I said that because you're like, you're going to make me smile now, aren't you? So here, I'm going to go just through a quick little practice. What I want you to do is I want you to look to the person on each side of you, uh, on whoever's close to you, and I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to smile at each other. Okay, on the count of three, hold on. Don't smile yet. Come on. One, two, three. See, don't you feel better? Smiling is good for the heart. It's good, it's good for us. So we began a series last week. I told you I like to preach in series to kind of keep our minds focused on, on one subject for a while. And we began a series last week called The Hard Way. And we kind of, we just talked about how we, at the beginning of the year, we like to start new, uh, we like to uh, have uh, New Year's resolutions. And so uh, the things that we resolve to do on January 1st uh, are starting to get really hard by, say, January 15th or, or three or four weeks into the year. So uh, we said that, the, that things that are worthwhile are usually hard. Anything that you've ever done that was worthwhile was probably something that was difficult for you. I mean, it's hard to raise a, 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 a godly family. It's hard to raise godly kids. It's hard to build a strong marriage. It's hard, to, uh, it's hard to lose weight. It's hard to give up habits that we have in our lives. It's hard to do those things. So what we said last week was that, uh, that what we need to do is we need to prior prioritize God into our schedule. And so I challenged you last week. I gave you an assignment last week to make an appointment with God for every single day. And then I told you, what I'm going to do is today I'm going to start building a foundation on top of that. So, but before I build that foundation, I'm going to need a couple volunteers, just two volunteers. I need two people to say, yep, I'll do that. Just, I want to help. I saw a hand over there. You can come. You Come on. Somebody else. One other person. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Little kid. I don't know your name. Come on. Okay. Okay. All right. One other person. One other person. Come on. Okay. Cassie, come on. I know your name. Okay. Right, what's your name? Veronica. Veronica. Come on up here, Veronica. Cassie, I want y'all to both stand right here. So, I got, I got a chain. I need you to hold that. Okay. I need you to hold that. Now, hold them, hold them kind of out like this, okay? Okay, now just stand there. I'm going to preach. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. No, so this is, this is what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to get closer together. And what I'm going to ask Cassie and Veronica to do is I want y'all to, uh, to link that together. And I'm going to say something while y'all link that together. So what we're talking about is, is, uh, is spending time with God. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Oh, wait, hold on. on. There we go. Here, no, just use this. This will work better. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure it would have pulled very much. Okay, there, there's that. Okay, let's get that side in. Okay. Now, I, your, uh, your attempt was, uh, was good. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that. But even if you would have gotten that knot put in there, it wouldn't have been nearly as, as stable as that, would it? Okay. There was a missing link there that would keep one chain from getting connected to the other chain, right? So, okay, let's give Veronica and Cassie a hand. Thank y'all. So, last week, like I said, we talked about, uh, about uh, putting, prioritizing God. And so, what we do when we talk about prioritizing God, we're talking about, if, if you've been in church or been grown up in church, you, you know it is kind of a quiet time, right? Quiet time. Now, if kids hear quiet time, they, they run, right? Uh, when, when adults hear quiet time, most of the time we kind of like that. But we don't stick to it. 
And I think I'm going to tell you why, because today we're going to talk about the missing link that, that, that keeps us from experiencing what God has planned for us in our quiet time. So if you've got a Bible, turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 1, Psalms chapter 1. Uh, And we're going to talk about the missing link because the Bible in Psalms chapter 1, I believe, tells us what that missing link is. Now, the book of Psalms was kind of was a was a worship book. It was written that they were poems and songs that were written and compiled over hundreds of years. And and then they would go on to be used as as a worship, kind of like a hymnal or a praise, a praise and worship book for the people of Israel. So in honor of the fact that uh, that it's a worship book to Today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing my message to you. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I, I could never do that. Um, if, you get to, if you get to know me, you'll understand that I will not ever sing a solo. Uh, I, would, I would much sooner go to India than I had sing a solo, okay? Uh, and much rather go to India than I had sing a solo. So in Psalm chapter 1, if you've got your, got your Bibles, look with me. We'll put it on the screen as well. It says, how happy, or some of your versions of the Bible may say blessed, how happy or blessed is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path of sinners or join a group of mockers. So first of all, he says that the man who's blessed by God is the man or the woman whose conduct is not shaped by the world that they live in or the world that we live in. It's like Paul said in Romans 12 too. He says, don't be conformed to this world. But he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So God blesses the man, the woman, the boy, the girl who doesn't allow his life to be molded or to fit into the mold of this world. But we live in this world, and therefore it's easy to find ourselves uh, falling into the mold of this world, isn't it? We find ourselves talking like this world talks. We find ourselves thinking like this world thinks. We find ourselves doing things that this, that this world does. And Jesus actually talks about it in Matthew chapter 7. You don't have to turn there. I'll put it on the screen where he says, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who go through it. And why they go through it? How do they go through it? They go through it because they follow the paths of this world. They follow the advice of this world. But here's what Jesus goes on to say. He says, but how narrow is the gate and difficult, okay? There's our word, hard, difficult, difficult, the road that leads to life and few find it. So the psalmist says that you're blessed if you take this path. So look at what he goes on and says. He says in verse 2 of Psalms chapter 1, he says instead, okay, the person who's blessed by God doesn't follow that path, but instead he delights in the Lord's instruction. He delights in the Lord's instruction. God blesses, in other words, those who delight in his word. Now, I don't really need to define what delight means because automatically when you think about delight, there are some things that come to your mind, aren't there? I mean, for some of you, what came to your mind was somebody that, uh, somebody that you're close to, a spouse, your children. For some of you, some type of food came to your mind. It is Sunday. It's almost time for lunch. For for some of you, it was it was it was a uh, it was a hobby that you have that came to your mind. The thing that you delight in is really that thing that that you can't wait to get to, that you can't wait to do. Like like if you're a golfer and you delight in golfing, you can't wait. You in fact, when you get done with your last round of golf, you're already thinking about your next round of golf. And, and so that's, that's kind of the idea of what he means to delight in something. He says we're blessed if we delight in God's word. And so then now, he comes, now comes the key, okay? Now comes the missing link that he's going to tell us about. Okay, are you ready for this? If you're ready, say I'm ready. 
I'm not so sure you're ready for this. Because again, this isn't easy. Well, it's not hard like, like uh, you know, it's hard, hard, but it's just not natural for us. It's difficult for us. Listen to what he says. He says, blessed is the man who delights in God's word and he meditates on it day and night. Now, he doesn't say blessed is the man who reads God's word, although there's benefit in that. You kind of have to read it if you're gonna, if you're gonna delight in it if you're going to meditate upon it. But he says, if you want to be transformed and if you want to understand God's Word, it's going to take more than just reading it like you read a novel or like you read a magazine or like you you read a a, a post on Facebook. Because what happens is on those, those things that you read, the meaning is very plain in most stuff that you read. It's very, it's very clear. It's very understandable. And, and I'm, I'm not sure y'all have noticed this, but the, the meaning in the Bible is not always that plain. It doesn't always come through quite as, as clear as, as we wish it would, it would come through. So what he says is, is he says, Blessed is the man who, uh, who delights in God's word, and on his word he meditates day and night. Now, let me tell you what meditating is not. Meditating is not clearing your mind so that there's nothing in it. For some of us, that's not very hard work, is it? But it's not, it's not clearing your mind so that there's nothing in it. Meditation, according to the Bible, is, is thinking. It's reflecting. It's talking about. It's discussing God's Word. Here, here's a great picture of it. Raise your hand if you've got a dog. Okay, when you, give your, when you give your dog a bone, have you ever heard, he'll, he'll just sit, it's a big enough bone, you, he'll just sit over there, he'll have his feet on it, and he'll just be chewing on it, and you'll hear kind of a grunting sound. That dog is enjoying that bone. That dog, you better not get in his way because he likes that bone. And that's kind of what it's like when you meditate on something. You chew on it. You think about it. You, you savor it. And that's what, that's what meditation is all about. And that's, why, and that's what he says here. He says, blessed is the man who meditates on his word, who de- delights in his word, and he meditates on it day and night. And here's, here's another kind of way to understand this, this whole thing of meditation as well. Because, again, the meaning of God's Word is not always that plain to us. I, I don't know if you've ever sat through... I know you have, never mind. You've sat through a quiet time. You might have even sat through a, a preacher's sermon before. And when you left, you said, What did he say? I, I, just, I didn't get anything. And so here's where meditation kind of comes in. Uh, Guys, you know when you have a project, uh, maybe you're building something or you're repairing something, and you spend hours on that project, and you just keep running into walls. You can't figure it out. You keep, you keep trying to figure out a solution, and nothing's coming to you. So after you, you know, maybe said a few choice words and then repented of them later, you, you walk away, and all of a sudden, something comes to you. Because you've been thinking about it. And see, that's what meditation is. See, what we want to do when we get into God's Word, we want, it, we want the meaning to be plain. Because, by the way, we don't have a lot of time on our hands, God. I mean, i got somewhere to be. i got other things to do. And so, what, what we've got to do is we've got to stop and we've got to begin to chew on. We've got to begin to reflect on God's Word. Again, this isn't easy. I mean, it's not hard, but it's just not something that's natural for us. It's not something that, that we just wake up and decide to start, start doing this thing. Because we want to read God's Word the same way that we, we read a blog. Or the same, way that we, uh, the same way that we read a magazine. We want to see what it says and we want to go on with our life. But it doesn't work that way. But look at what he goes on to say. This is great. Look at verse 3. He, this is the person who delights in God's word and meditates on it. He said, he is like a tree planted beside streams of water that bears its fruit in season and whose leaf doesn't 
wither. He says, whatever he does prospers. The tree that's planted by streams of water. So the picture here is like God, you, you plant your life by the streams of God's word. And he says, he says when you do that, that uh, it's like a tree that's planted by streams of water. In other words, this tree didn't just happen to come up. It wasn't just by accident that this tree started to grow. This tree was planted, planted by streams of water on purpose. It was done intentionally. And so what he, what he tells us here that when you delight in God's word, when you meditate on God's word day and night, you're like a tree. You've, you've intentionally planted yourself in God's word. And then the words, that it, it tells us that the blessings are not automatic. See, this, this is the thing. I want to give you a little clue here about about blessings from God. Blessings from God are not always automatic. Well, let's, just, let's just take salvation as an example. Your salvation is not automatic. You must repent of your sins and believe in Jesus Christ if you want salvation. This whole thing, and now we, live in, we live in a world that likes to, likes to preach and bring up how, how, how loving God is and how forgiving God is. And both of those are true statements. But they're not the full picture of God. You see, what, if we want to receive salvation, we're, we're grateful that Jesus Christ suffered and he died on the cross for our sins. But we've got to be willing to place our faith in him, to believe him, to follow Jesus. See, the blessings of God aren't automatic. You want to begin to grow as a Christian? You want to begin to experience the blessings of God in your life? Not just the eternal blessings, but the blessings for today? Then you need to plant your life by the streams of God's word. And now listen to this. Watch what he says. This is, he's going to tell us what, what, the, uh, what the results of planting our lives in God's word is. Number one, we receive nourishment. These things are planted by streams of water, and those waters bring, bring nourishment. If you plant your life by streams of water, you, by the water of God's word, you will receive nourishment from God's word. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, he quoted the Old Testament. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You receive nourishment from God's word. But the second thing, not only do you receive nourishment, you bear fruit. He said uh, that we plant our, if we plant our, we'll be planted by streams of water that bears its fruit. If you want to bear fruit as a follower of Jesus, you've got to plant your life by the streams of God's word. You have to. And then he goes on, not only he says, he says another result of planting your life by the streams of God's word, is that, that you won't wither. You won't wither. Now, he doesn't say that there won't be hard times. He doesn't say that there won't be droughts and there won't be hardships. But he says that you won't wither. In fact, what Jesus says in John 16, he says, in this world you will have trouble. No doubt about it. In this world you are going to have trouble. But he said, fear not. He said, I've overcome the world. So if you want, if you plant your lives by the, by the stream of God's word, you'll receive nourishment, you'll bear fruit, and you won't wither. And then finally, uh, another, a final point on that, fruit comes in season. Here's what's going to happen. And I'm going to show you something here in just a minute, but, but here's what's going to happen. You're going to spend time in God's word, and you're not going to see results quickly. And you're going to think that you're wasting your time. You're going to think that, that it's not doing you any good. But what he says is they bear fruit in season. In other words, not, it's not always when we wish we would bear it. It's not always when we expect to bear it. We bear fruit in season. When the time is right. When, when that nourishment, when it's given, when, when it's received, everything that it needs to see, you begin to see that fruit sprout. It takes months. Sometimes it might even take, take years. 
But if you plant your life by the streams of God's word, God will bless you with what you need for, for each and every single day. I like to do sometimes what's called a sermon in the sentence so that if, if this happens to be one of those messages where you walk out and say, what did he say? This is the thing that I want you to hold on to. Reading and reflecting leads to a life transformed by God's blessing. Reading and reflecting on God's word leads to a life transformed by God's blessing. Do you want your life transformed by God's blessing? It's good to come to church. It's good to come hear me preach. It's good to go to a Sunday school class. It's good to be involved in fellowships. It's good to be doing ministry. But every single day, you pass up the opportunity for God to bless you when you pass up time in His Word and meditating on His Word. Reading and reflecting leads to a life transformed by God's blessing. Okay, so, we need to meditate on God's word. We, we need to know it, we need to read it, we need to study it so that, we can, so that we can meditate on it. But how do you meditate on it? Well, number one, there's lots of different answers for that question. There's lots of ways that you can meditate on God's word. Uh, and, and the way that I'm going to try and show you right now is not the only way. It may not even be the best way, but it's the way that I've learned. And the way that I'm about to show you, uh, I don't like showing it to groups this large. Because, because I don't know how effective it is, but at least it's something you can, you can begin to chew on. You can begin to reflect on. So it's something, actually, there's, and, and to, to do a quiet time and to be able to reflect on God's word, you need, there's three main things that you need besides quiet. You need a Bible. Okay? You need a Bible. Number two, you need a pen. Number three, you need a journal. Now, some of you don't like writing. Okay? I understand that. But I'm going to tell you what one of my favorite preachers of all time said. His name's Adrian Rogers. He said, the dullest pen is always better than the sharpest mind. In other words, if you want to remember what God says to you on any given day, don't trust in that, that mind, that brain of yours to remember it. You get you a pen and you write it down. So here's, here's what it is. Everybody say soap. Yeah, it, it, just soap. I mean, it's, you know, wash your hands kind of soap. Soap. What I want to share with you in this acrostic is, is what I use every single morning, every single day when I do my quiet time. The, the S in soap stands for Scripture. So to do this, you just have to, you have, to have a place that you're going to go, and you've got to read a passage of Scripture, and, you've got to, and, and you have to read it over and over and over again. It's not one of those things where you just read it one time and, and bam, you've got what you want. Sometimes you pick that passage of Scripture and you just read it. And you read it five times. You read it ten times. Maybe you can read it in, in two times. But you, you just read it until God speaks to you. Because you know, because I've said this before and I've only been here for a week and a half. <laughs> you know, anytime you open up God's Word, God speaks to you. Because this is God's Word. The, the question for us then is how to receive it. So you, this, the S stands for Scripture. You pick a Scripture, you, you study it, you read it over and over again. And here's what happens when you read it over and over again. A word pops out at you. A phrase pops out at you. A question comes to your mind. And so you, so, so you read it over and over again. So then the O stands for observation observation. 
So after, as, after you've read it a few times, you start to, to notice some things. And you start to make some observations. So, so you make those observations and you write them down. And they, some of them are just very simple observations like, who wrote this? Some of them are, are observations like, who's he writing to? Some of it's an observation like, what does this tell me about God? Some of it's an observation like, what does this tell me about me? Because here's the thing about the Bible. When you read the Bible, it's like looking at a mirror. You learn things about yourself that, you, that you'd hope nobody would ever know. But yet the Bible reveals it to you. So you, you, you just jot down some observations. Now, I'm a preacher which means I'm preachy, which means when I write stuff down, I probably write down way more than needs to be written down. But I'm going to tell you right now, every, every, just about every message that I, that I stand up here to preach is going to originate through this. So you just come up with those observations. It may be one, it may be two, it may be five, it may be ten. And then the A stands for Application. This is that place where you decide, okay, what does this mean to me? What does this mean to me? Here's the reason why we misinterpret God's word a lot of times. Because we don't stop to see what God is saying, period. Our first thing to do is say, what is God saying to me? We need to see what God says first. Then we can know what God says to us. So it's the application. It could be one line. It could be two lines. You know, it, it what could be, you know, however much. Again, it just depends on, on you. Scripture, observation, application, and then the P stands for prayer. Prayer. You just write down your application in a prayer back to God. The application may be confessing sin and repenting of sin. The application may be something that you need to go do right now or you need to go do today. The application may be something that you need to do with your spouse. It may be something that you need to, to learn. But you just write it down in a prayer. And so this is, this is what I've done. And hopefully you're not going to really be able to read this. I know you won't be able to read this because it's my handwriting. But i got a couple pictures, okay? And I, and I just wanted you to see kind of what this, this looks like looks like for me because I, I really just want you to, to, have, to have kind of a, a, an, an example for you to use. So what you've got, I always do the, uh, uh, the date and then I always write whatever, whatever I've read. So yesterday I read out of Psalms chapter 42. And then in Psalms chapter 42, I wrote under it scripture. I read it a few times and I, and, and I figured out the verse that I wanted to focus on, I think, was, was verse, verses 1 and 2. So I, I read those verses over and over again. And then you see, I, I wrote down the word observation, and I just wrote a few bullet points of some observations that I wrote that, that, that came to me. And then the third part of it, I wrote down application, and then I wrote down an, an application of that passage for me. And then the final part, I wrote down a prayer. Just a quick, a simple prayer of what God had said to me. And that's how I meditate on God's Word. And then, and then the last thing that I do, go back to the first picture real quick. The first, I, I put a title on it. If you see there at the top. And the reason I put a title on it is because I want to be able to go back and remember what God has said to me. So at the beginning of my journal, at the beginning of my notebook, I have a little table of contents so that I can go back and see at any Anytime I want what God said to me on January the 9th, wait, January the 10th, 2015. And all you do, and, and that's just one simple way that you can meditate. I was talking to somebody earlier this week that told me, that told me their, their plan uh, for how, how they do meditation. It doesn't have to look like this, but, but at, least, at least you can start somewhere. Because if you want God's blessings in your life, you need to do more than just show up at church. You need to do more than just go to Sunday school. Every single day, you and I have the privilege 
of meeting with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We have the privilege of seeing what He has to say to us, what He wants to say to us. And this is just one way that you can do it. If you want the blessings of God in your life, then you need to delight in God's Word. I don't delight in God's word. I feel like a hypocrite if I try to. Listen. I don't delight in vegetables. In fact, until about four years ago, I, it was getting me to eat vegetables was like getting me to go to the dentist. I hated it. But you know, over the last four years, I've actually started to like green beans and broccoli. Well, no, I mean, I don't pass, I'll pass over that if there's you know, plenty of something else. But I mean, but, but I can already see that God is developing within me a taste for that. And it's the same thing with God's Word. I didn't start out eating green beans and broccoli because I loved it. And it certainly wasn't easy. I started out eating it because I knew that my health depended on it. Your health, your spiritual health, and your physical health depends on you taking time to meditate on God's Word. So then the, the, top, the foundation last week was, was make an appointment with God. And now you have something that you can do during that appointment. You can pick a passage of Scripture. You can go to the book of Mark and just take it, take it bit by bit. You don't have to read a whole book. You don't have to read a whole chapter. Take it bit by bit. And just reflect on it, ponder on it, chew on it for a little bit. Students, do this. This isn't just for adults. In fact, students, if you'll do this before I started doing it, before most of these adults in here started doing it, you're going to be way ahead of us when you're our age. But I want to challenge you and I want to encourage you to do this. Next week, we're going to add another layer onto this foundation about, about what to do during that appointment that you have with God. So let me just say, I'm getting ready to close, but let me just say this. There's going to be some of you who are here today who are going to kind of walk away and forget some of this, most of this stuff. And that's, that's okay. Well, it's not okay. It's not good. But, but that's, just, that's just where you are. But let me just say this. If you're one who's here today to say, you know what, I'm not even sure I believe God's word. I'm not even, I'm not even sure, sure that it's, it's true. Well, listen, I, never, I haven't watched a movie my whole life because I believed it was true. I just watch it because I want to do it. So I would encourage you, wherever you're at in your walk with Christ, to spend time in God's word. If you're not, if you don't even have a walk with Christ yet, that... God's drawing you there, but spend time in, in the Bible. And I want to put something out there right now. If you're here today, I told somebody this week, there's, two, there's very few things that I enjoy more than preaching and more than talking to people about how to grow in their faith. There's very few things that I enjoy more than those, those two things. If you've got any questions about any of this stuff, I just want you to call me up. And we'll, put a, we'll, we'll set aside time together and we'll, we'll walk through it. I'll bet you I even learn a thing or two from you. I'm going to ask if you would to bow with me. We're going to pray. Lord God, this morning, thank you.